Hey guys, SK here, back with another Clash Royale video, hope you guys are all doing well. In today's video, I'm going to be playing Hog Rider Earthquake, one of the most consistent decks in all of Clash Royale. I am normally an expo player, but I can play a lot of different decks, and this is, in my opinion, one of the best decks in the game right now. So I'm currently at 7 wins in a grand challenge, going to be trying to get the nice 12 win for you guys live right here, and let's see what we can do. So we see an Executioner, I'm going to Hog, I think, I don't really like going Knight the back against Executioner. Because eventually it just walks up, and it will actually just kind of get hit by the Executioner and the Tower. Like, same as Bowler, I usually don't like going Knight the back against that. But we're against Exy Nato, which is not the best sign. I'm going to go Goblins for this Miner as well. Ice Spirit so the Exy doesn't splash the Goblin just in case. And, uh, yeah, I basically like this deck. So, for some context, Ian77, what the best Hog Rider player in the world, I would say, finished number 7 in the world last season on ladder with this exact deck. Or, he did have Skeletons instead of Goblins, I believe, but uh, pretty much Hog EQ, Firecracker, Tesla. And we also do have the Evo Knight in here. Evo Knight is probably one of the best cards in the entire game still, even though it did get, like, a somewhat of a nerf recently. It's still one of the best cards in the entire game, no doubt. And so, uh, that's why it's kind of been making waves here recently. Hog EQ has kind of switched around the range troop it uses. So right now we have the Firecracker in here. It has historically ran Archer Queen and Musketeer as well. Um, I don't know if there were any other big ones. I think Executioner, like, is sometimes using Hog, but usually, like, Hog Lightning or Hog Rocket. Not really Hog EQ, necessarily. So... Uh, we also do have the Tesla in here. Tesla is one of the best buildings in the game right now, actually. Like, I would say it's a pretty solid B-tier card. It did get that nice buff a couple months back, where uh, I would say it was long overdue, but it's very welcome. And uh, it's just been used because it's very solid against both ground and air. So with the Tesla and the Firecracker, we actually do have a solid chance against air decks, such as Lava Hound. Whereas Hoggy Q, which usually ran Bomb Tower for a while before Tesla was good, would kind of just auto-lose against Lava Hound, to be honest. Again, we do have the Evo Knight in here. You can alternatively use the Evo Firecracker if you'd like, but I do think Evo Knight is just a lot stronger, and uh, that's why I'm using it. I'm going to be EQ cycling here. So Earthquake is a very strong card, of course, against any buildings, but unfortunately my opponent right here has kind of a hard counter to us. He has Minor Poison Cycle with Exy Nato and a Bomb Tower, so this is honestly a pretty tough matchup because he can just Nato every hog and then Bomb Tower every other hog, so like, I can never really break through. Uh, I'm going to Knight for this Miner, sadly locks onto Tower. Goblins are used in here because I feel like they're very easy to use, honestly. You can use Skeletons if you want, guys. I just like Goblins against both Miner and Graveyard. They definitely do help against those matchups a bit more. Has to go for a Nato like that. Really nice that the Firecracker gets a hit. I think I'm going to get a Hog hit as well. Nice, so I'm kind of staying in the match just by pressuring constantly. I'm going to try and outcycle right now and go for another Hog because he just went for a Nato pretty last minute desperation type. So he's going to Bomb Tower, I'm going to Earthquake, and I think I can get some damage here because, as you guys can see, Hoggy Q kind of shreds a Bomb Tower. Not really, actually. Like, okay, I didn't get a hit, sadly. Uh, like, Bomb Tower is actually very good at surviving against an Earthquake, but... It still does pretty well. Anyways, I'm pressuring so much right now. I'm going to go in again. Sadly, Firecracker dies, but Ice Spirit does connect, which is huge. He has to go for a uh, Nato, but the Evo Knight was tanking for a while, so I, I still don't get a hit. Wow. He's able to hold on. I was, I feel like I outcycled him really hard there, and I was kind of hoping to get a hit, but I guess not. Going to Goblins for the Ice Spirit and then log the Miner. I need to prevent as much Miner damage as possible, honestly, because that thing is problematic. If he catches up in damage to me, because right now I have a lead, which is important, because he will actually out-damage me with Minor Poisons and Triple Elixir, pretty sure. He does mess up the NATO timing, perfect. And Firecracker is honestly a secondary win con in many matchups. Like, right now, I'm actually getting lots of Firecracker value on Tower. Like, I'm getting all these occasional hits. And that's a big part of playing this deck. You know, if you can't really break through with Hog Riders, you have to find other ways to break through. One of those is a, a Firecracker. Uh, one of those is also Earthquake Cycle potentially. So I'm going to hog again. I'm going to wait till he goes bomb tower to go EQ. I think I missed the e bomb tower, but it's fine. Um, goblins for the miner and knight as well before the poison takes it out. Hopefully nice, good catch. Have to catch miner is very important here. Um, and ice spirit is very useful against miners too, by the way, just in case uh, you need to like counter it. Going to hog to pressure while defending and then just goblins to predict a miner. He didn't get it off, but still um, good attempt. And he's like since he's stuck defending, he's not really getting that many minor poisons. Like, I, I've got, like, two hogs before he went for this one minor poison, I think. It's, as you guys can see, though, it's getting very close because he's kind of catching up. I cannot let that ice brick connect. I will lose if it does. 
gonna EQ again. Gonna try and get back to one more hog. Knight to catch the miner. Oh, we did catch it. Beautiful. And then I need to hog, and I think I can win, because I don't think that's gonna kite the hog rider. Um, if I didn't catch that miner, I might have lost, by the way, but gonna EQ log. Hopefully get a hit here, and uh, that should pretty much seal the deal. Yeah, we do get a hog hit. Beautiful. So that was honestly a really well-played match by me, because I would say that is a pretty tough matchup. Like, minor poison, exe nato, I don't think that's very easy, so I'm very proud of how I played that. Very nice first win of the video. Alright guys, so our next match against Jose X. Also, if you guys do enjoy the content, please make sure to like and subscribe. I am actually, like, 150 off uh, 30,000 subscribers as of the time of recording this video, so that's absolutely insane. Um, the, like, the growth has just been unreal recently. I've been putting in a lot of work, and I'm glad to see it's finally paying off, so, you know, road to 30k is pretty much almost, like, at the end. Like, I feel like... Uh, this might be the last video I make before I reach it. I don't know, but either way, this is just insane, right? So, yeah, thank you guys. Uh, feel free to support if you'd like. So, it looks like we are up against another Hoggy Q deck. Although, he does have the delivery. Um, I'm going to Firecracker to get some chip on this knight. As you guys can see, I do get some nice early chip. And he was Firecracker himself, which is fair. That's just going to be a big counter push. But I can just knight to activate King Tower early. And King Tower activation is obviously a very crucial step against most Firecracker decks. So that's going to be very helpful for me. Knight will actually kill this Firecracker unless he protects it. Which he does actually do with the Hog. Well played. Uh, but still low Tesla. And he does go for an EQ. Honestly, guys, sometimes it's single Elixir. Especially when I'm playing Expo. I don't mind going for the... Uh, low Teslas to bait on Earthquake. If he did respond to that Ice Spirit with like a delivery, by the way, he would have lost the game because he would not ha have had enough Elixir for a Hog. That's why I was like hovering my Hog instantly at 4. If he did go Ice Spirit there, uh, or if he did like go something, I don't know if he has an Ice Spirit on this deck because he has a delivery. Which, by the way, should help me out quite a bit actually because um, delivery just. I mean, it's useful against. Okay, wow, he logged the Hog out of Bomb Tower range. Yeah, that is honestly a good game. Like, that is just a big misplay on his end. Um, I get two Hog hits and. Like, it's pretty much over at this point. Uh, as for how to play this deck in general, I guess I'll try and give you guys some general tips. So for starting out, I usually do like going Hog first play if I can. There's really no harm. In fact, you can starting hand people very often. I get starting hand by Hog very often when they go Hog first play. And worst case, it's only four Elixir. You can come back against pretty much everything. I'd say, like, the worst case is, like, they have a Tornado, and they get a Free King activation or something. But otherwise, like... It's really not that bad to go hog first play. I think I don't need to log that because King will help out. And Firecracker gets another hit. So, you know, this is just really good. Uh, next, remember your win condition is Hog Rider, but you also have an Earthquake in here. So, whether you're playing against, uh, like, say... I guess a cycle deck usually, um, for example, the one I just went against, Minor Poison, uh, when you're playing against a matchup like that, you are actually going to have to use EQ as a secondary win con, because you're not going to get hog hits that often, um, and like just pre-EQs are pretty good, even EQ cycling in some matchups is pretty good. Uh, next up, you know, against Lava Hound decks, I would say. That is a very tricky one, honestly, and I do struggle with that myself sometimes. I think opposite lane pressure when they go Lava on the back is very important, of course, because you can't let them build up a big push. And if you ever go same lane, that's a huge mistake because they can play something behind their Lava Hound, and that's going to hurt you as well. He does also have an Evo Firecracker, by the way, which I would argue... Okay, this is actually looking really sketchy. Hold on, let me try and defend this. I'll log to take everything out. High Goblins to cut everything back up. Okay, that knight is... Uh, I'm going to have to knight to push it off my tower, and we did get it off, thankfully. That was an okay defense, actually. I had... I was down quite a lot of elixir, um, but I would argue that, honestly, Evo Knight helps me out more than Evo Firecracker helps him out. I mean, he can snipe if he wants, but for the most part, like, the knight has just been putting in work. Gonna pre-EQ, if you want, like, skeletons or something there, that would have been maybe a knight hit, so I just wanted to pre-EQ there. Um, oh, another really fun tip as well, by the way, sometimes, like, you have a Firecracker on the board, you can EQ to hold something in place, like, slowly on their side of the map, in front of the Princess Tower, and that will actually just let your Firecracker get even more damage on it. He goes for a really aggro Firecracker, the bridge. I mean, he's going for every Desperation play he can make at this point. I kind of understand he's low on damage quite a lot, but, yeah, that's not really gonna fly. So that's gonna be a nice win against the Hog EQ Mirror matchup. Very nice one. Alright guys, so next match against Off Life No On Plus. I don't really know what that means, but good luck. Um, again, also by the way, Ian77 was... Oh, we're against Lava Hound right now. Maybe I can show you guys exactly what I meant. So I'm going to start with a Firecracker at the back, and then Hog Rider opposite. So, you know, I was just talking about Lava Hound tips. Um, does he, what does he have? Okay, Barbs. As you guys can see, he played Barbs at 5. So he's at like 0 Elixir right now. And this might be really good for me because he's low on Elixir. Like, I basically forced out Barbs. That being said, I do have to respond to the Barbs still. I think I'll just go for a knight that should full counter all of them. I do have a Tesla as well. I'm going to let this Lava Hound go because I know he has like a balloon or say a flying machine or some kind of support that he wants to play behind the Lava Hound. So I don't want to play the Tesla right away. I guess I'll play it now that he's like not really doing anything. I'll play it low um, just to take everything out. 
and he goes for a horde and then a miner. I'm gonna firecracker. Okay, well played with the miner sniping the firecracker, but it will push itself back, and I went goblins to protect. Good zap as well. Actually, okay, not the best knight on my end. I saved like two or three minion hits max. I probably could have just hogged at the bridge. He would have been low on elixir. Would have been a good punish. Even still, though, knight's gonna get a counter push, so don't underestimate the knight right here. Um, he's gonna do work. Honestly, I'd say Lava Hound decks are still bad matchups for Hog for the most part. Like, I think Ian agrees with this as well. Especially if they have arrows for the Firecracker, which this guy does. But just, you know, switching back from Tesla to Bomb Tower. Uh, or from no Bomb Tower to Tesla does help you out because you have a building that can actually work, right? I'm going to go Hog same lane this time. I know what I said about, like, not letting them support the Lava Hound with a counter push. But I actually do kind of like just taking the tower here. Because if we tower trade, I feel like that's going to be pretty good for me. I'm going to Tesla and Firecracker early. He can only arrows one. And this is pretty much tower down, which I'm actually fine with. Again, like, I don't really mind this. I'm actually going to pressure with a knight and goblins. He has to go for the evil barbs. Um, after which point I can maybe counter push. Yeah, I'm going to earthquake them as well. And I'm honestly, like, good with this tower trade because we're going same lane, which means, um, I guess, I don't know if I'd rather play same or opposite. I mean, with expo, I'd obviously rather play same. But I guess with hog, it's a bit of a different story. But I still think, you know, tower trade always helps you out because you do have limited air defense in general with this deck. He goes lava the back. Yeah, minions are going to stop, uh, the hog except for one hit, so that's okay. Just firecracker should clean these all up. If she actually hits, does she? No, she does not. Okay, wow. So I take pretty much full minions damage there, but that's fine. This guy has a horde, which is problematic because he has arrows. That means, like, his... My only counter to his horde can get arrows off, but... Loon comes in too early. Gonna Firecracker behind the king in case he arrows. That way, like, I can probably keep one of them alive and he can't arrows both. Okay, well played, actually. He does, uh... Minor to snipe one of them and then arrows the other one, but... I'm back to a third Firecracker. As you guys can see, Firecracker cycle is optimal and very key in this matchup. And just like that, I was able to full defend that push, which is actually really nice. I'm going to go Hog and Evo Knight in the pocket now. Evo Knight's going to tank for years, like... Oh, he goes Lava Hound at not the right time at all. That was not a good Lava Hound. He had to go, like, barbs on defense there. That might just cost him the game. Okay, it doesn't cost him the game, but it's going to cost him big time. Already back to a second Firecracker, going to go for it. He might be back to Balloon, so I'm a bit worried about that in the pocket, maybe. Oh my god, look at that satisfying Firecracker. That was crazy. Going to go Hog in front of this, and that should be GG, gonna pre-log on the barbs, he goes for, okay, still goes barbs, so that's good, and as you guys can see, I get a hog hit, and I get some firecracker, look at this satisfying firecracker, just absolutely destroying, I don't even know if I need to tesla, but I'll just tesla to be safe, and like, this game is pretty much over, double firecracker is coming down, he has to respond with a defensive miner that does not come down in time, gonna net to protect the firecracker, another big fundamental, of course, protecting your firecrackers, gonna log, and that is gonna be a hog hit, I think, he has to zap, okay, that, at this point, that's just two EQs, and that's GG, he, he goes for a last ditch push, but, um, firecracker is putting in where he can arrows if he wants, I mean, I just cutted them very far away with the goblins, so, worst case, if he went arrows, I probably would have still been able to stall out and defend, so, I think hog still gets a hit against minion horde, right, okay, no, it doesn't, I, it did the other time, I swear, but Firecracker still <laughs> destroys the entire horde. Like, it's just been Firecracker City right now. And now it's just going to be two EQs. Uh, Evil Barb's in the pocket. Just going to cycle back to a second Earthquake very casually. Um, he does actually almost... He does actually miss the Firecracker with the Miner. Just get an Evo Knight to tank. And then just get my last EQ down. And that's going to be a good game, guys. That's exactly what I meant. You want to pressure when they Lava Hound. I do like the Tower Trade again. Because it does help with the King helping out. Like, you have limited air defense already. You have no spell that hits air. So the King Tower helping out is a big thing, I would say. And otherwise, that was just a really nice win against, I would say, maybe a decent matchup. But probably not the easiest one, right? So, very proud of that win as well. Alright guys, so next match against Broly Clo. I guess now I will talk about substitutions in this deck, for those of you who are wondering. Maybe you want to play this deck on ladder, maybe you don't have Evos unlocked. So of course just normal knight works, uh, like without Evo knight. You don't really have to worry about that. Normal knight is okay, um, instead of just Evo knight. You can also run Valkyrie if you want, if you're playing like say in mid ladder. You're struggling against mega knights, against like a lot of swarm, against a lot of spam. Uh, Valkyrie does work. Uh, you can also play the Mighty Miner. That was actually the most meta version of this deck back when Evo Firecracker was broken and there was no Evo Knight in the game. We had Mighty Miner and Evo Firecracker and Bomb Tower. I think you can still play that exact version if you want. Uh, you don't really need a Tesla with Evo Firecracker, I'd argue, because it does have very good air defense, but of course you are putting yourself at a big disadvantage even still. That was really aggressive. He has to respond to both sides, so I'm going to go for a Hog right now. He actually cannot afford a bomb tower, as you guys can see. That just might be a good game already, because, yeah, he's going for... 
wall breakers. Um, I'll just ice spirit to take one hit. So I noticed he was too aggressive with that log, and that's why I just kind of punished him with the hog. And this is the beauty of hog rider, guys. Like you can literally just pressure so well in single. If they're at zero elixir, a hog rider will take like half their tower or more. So <laughs> it's actually kind of crazy how good hog can be. Um, and we're against minor wall breakers right now. I would say maybe not the easiest matchup because they can like defend most hogs and then just minor poison you out. It's kind of like that other minor poison Exynado deck, except it's more of a cyclo version than a tornado version. So they do have less counters to the hog, like I guess, but I still don't really like the matchup. I don't know how Ian feels about it though. But I did get back to my Evil Knight before he got back to his, so this is honestly a counter push right here, I think. So I can hog, I can Ice Spirit to predict the bats. Nice, we did predict the bats successfully. We, did we hit all? Okay, very satisfying Ice Spirit. That's going to be a lot of hog damage as well. Maybe like three hits. And we get two. Still two hits. You know, we're in the lead in the right, so uh, this is looking really good. Like, this is looking amazing. Um, I was back I was back to substitution, so I talked about the knight. You can play Valk, Mighty Miner. You can play Knight or Evo Knight. If you don't have Evo Knight, don't worry about it. Um, next up, building. You can play Cannon, Tesla, or Bomb Tower. I kind of like Tesla the most because I'm a big Tesla fan. Of course, I play Expo. And I just think it's the most balanced card. Of course, Ian played with Tesla to finish top 7. So there's obviously something going well about the card, right? But Bomb Tower is also very solid. Did get a nerf, but still a very solid card. We've actually played a fair amount of Bomb Tower today. We played another Hoggy Q player playing Bomb Tower. We played this deck with Bomb Tower. And we played the first Minor Poison guy who also had a Bomb Tower. So, you know, Bomb Tower is still pretty popular in the meta. If you would rather play Bomb Tower, you're struggling against like splash or whatever you can use that um lastly i would say the air support you know you have firecracker you can also run a musketeer which works super well because musky is very good on defense actually it's a bit more heavy duty it's a bit more expensive than a firecracker but it does do well because you can just stack musketeers it's obviously much better against lava hound i'd say um and a musky is clutch. You can also run an archer queen if you want, but I would say there's the big downside of only being able to play one queen at a given time, which does kind of hurt because, you know, you want air defense, and if you only have one queen at any time, that can kind of screw you over, uh, in a way. So that is a bit tricky, uh, but I know Ian has played that deck to a lot of success and made it work as well. So I would argue that archer queen can put in a lot of work too, if used right, you also obviously have the three card cycle enabled by the Archer Queen. So, uh, yeah, just, you know, Musketeer, Firecracker, Archer Queen, your three standards. And then you obviously have Ice Pit or Goblins. That's, I mean, sorry, Skeletons or Goblins. This guy has another Tornado. Don't really like the look of that because Nato decks are generally not the easiest matchups for Hog. I'm going to EQ the King Tower because if they do have a Nato, you can possibly three crown them. So there's no harm in actually, like, hitting the King Tower with your uh, Earthquake cycle. Um, but yeah, I'd say Skeletons are. You can also run Evo Skeletons, right? Like, this deck has three Evos right now. Knight, Firecracker, Skeletons. So, if you don't have all of them unlocked, you can still use whatever one you have. I'm going to Knight Hog. Let's see what he has for this, because he just uses Nato. He has a Bowler. That's still going to be a lot of damage, I think, because Hog is going to get, like... Yeah, it's going to go out of Bowler range. That's going to be, like, two Hog hits. Beautiful. The one downside is I have a huge counter push to deal with, but this is why I love Tesla. Bomb Tower would actually work perfectly in this situation as well. Maybe even better than a Tesla, so... Um, I'm just gonna Ice Spirit to freeze. I'll have the Goblins once it locks onto the Tesla. I don't really like surrounding a bowler sometimes, because if you mess up, you know, you'll kind of get screwed over by the Splash. But, uh, otherwise, yeah, we force an E was out as well, which I actually don't think he needed. Maybe he did, but the King was activated, so that was a bit of an overspend, I'd say. But I will definitely take it. And... Yeah, so skeletons or goblins, personal preference, skeletons help you cycle faster, so they're better against, like, cycle decks, for example. Um, but goblins are better against minor decks again, because they are very good against minor. They're also better against, like, bridge bam, I'd argue, because uh, they're spell-resistant to, like, zap. Um, and they do also help against graveyard, because you actually do have a full graveyard counter in the form of goblins, which means they have to graveyard poison against your goblins, which is just going to be a 9 for 2. So that's like an insane trade if you think about it. So I feel like goblins are personally easier to use, um, just for me personally. You can use skeletons if you want. Ian was playing skeletons at top ladder last season. So again, just a ton of personal preference. It really does just come down to whatever you are comfortable with. Um, this is probably my favorite deck right now, or favorite version of it right now, which is why I'm playing it. It goes for the Bowler and Ewiz, and, uh, Hog almost uh, gets a hit. I was gonna say, if Hog still got a hit there, that would be insane. I have a casual friend who always tells me that he thinks Hog needs a nerf, which is pretty funny, but, I mean, I can see why it's a big sentiment in the community, because 
it gets hits against like a lot of stuff, right? This is a bit of a tricky defense. I'm gonna goblins for the graveyard. Cycle back to another knight, which is Evoed. Log once he freezes, just to clear up all the graveyard skeletons. And then Evo Knight is putting in work. I'll Ice Spirit as well for this Phoenix. Goblins up high just to not let the Ewas get too much damage. I did take a lot of damage to be honest, but I think it's fine. I survived. That was a huge push, and I think I defended well. Gonna hog opposite. He has to NATO again. Uh, I'll EQ cycle in the left as he NATOs. Actually, I maybe should have hit the king, but I mean, hitting the princess is also fine. He is definitely primed for a graveyard right now if he wants. Evo Knight comes down. Gonna knight, gonna goblins for the graveyard. I'll Ice Spirit to cycle back to my log because I know he's gonna freeze any second. And so you just have to have that awareness, guys. If they freeze, look at how satisfying that log was. Cleaning up the entire graveyard. Um, if I didn't Ice Spirit, I would have struggled to get back to a log and then I would have had to log late. And that kind of would have screwed me over. So that's why, you know, you just kind of have to make those plays. I'm uh, gonna firecracker to get some chip early on against this tower. I get like 200 for it So I don't know the exact values of firecracker damage But I just know like you played at the bridge and snipe stuff you will get damage So it's pretty nice this ice spirit placement does counter a bowler as you guys can see very nice to know Gonna night hog now that I defended the bowler and he's not back to tornado I've outcycled it so card cycle counting by the way also very important for hog because you can outcycle their counters Oh really bad NATO I'd say and I think either that was a firecracker splash or a hog hit, either way that was a ton. And I'm just going to EQ that Eggsy as it walks by, just to s advance my card cycle a bit, and then hog again in a second, because he's not back to NATO. He just used NATO like very last minute, so he's like two off NATO right now. But yeah, card cycle counting guys, very important against hog, or with hog, because you want to outcycle their counters. Firecracker gets chip, gets like two hits, this is what I meant by secondary win condition, look at that. If he didn't go Phoenix, I would have gotten another one with that EQ. That's the play I was talking about, you know, holding troops in place and just uh, getting EQ value. I'm going to Firecracker cycle in the right again. Just stacking Teslas too, we can't do anything, and this is pretty much over. I'm just going to start EQ cycling, to be honest, at this point. Um, he is clogging up the lane, so there's no way I'm going to pressure. I also don't want to pressure in the left because I don't want to give him a free counter push, so you have to know when not to hog as well. That's a huge thing with this deck, guys. Know when not to hog, if that makes sense. Um, he misses the goblins with the freeze, so... That's going to counter most of the graveyard. I'll go for a low Tesla, and then a low Firecracker too, and then a Knight just to protect everything. Um, Firecracker gets chipped out. Going to Hog to pressure while defending, because he looks like he wants to go for a really aggro graveyard push right there, as he does. But, as you guys can see, Hog while defending is a very big play, because you can actually just pressure, and if they overcommit on offense, they can't defend the Hog, and that's going to be a good game. And just like that, that's going to be it, guys. That's going to be a 12 win, only one loss in this GC, with Hog EQ. And I think it was a pretty tough matchup anyways, but that's going to be it. 12 wins, so I was able to achieve my goal. And hopefully teach you guys a little bit about Hog EQ in the process. Again, I do play Expo, but I'm very capable of playing other decks at a high level. I've done so in CRL before. I have done so in global tournaments many times and GCs. So let me know if you guys did enjoy this video. If you'd like to see other deck spotlights, let me know which decks you would like to see as well. If you would, because I'm very happy to oblige. I'm trying to diversify my content a bit. Uh, but yeah, that's about it for the video. We had some very nice wins, five straight wins in a row. Uh, the loss was against Goblin Giant Sparky, which I would say is a tough matchup because you cannot kill Sparky with this deck very easily. That's one downside, but otherwise, you know, we had some very nice wins for the most part with Hoggy Q. I was playing with Mighty Miner at first, but I decided to try the Evo Knight later because I feel like it's better. But yeah, deck link will be in the description below if you guys would like to try it out. And let me know what you think about this deck and about the video overall. So that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Take care, and I will see you in the next one.